And Valerie Ainsworth, the executive director of Homeward Bound Adirondacks, joins us along with Mark Moeller, who is the chairman of the board of directors. Welcome to you both. It's nice to see you. Thank you. So a few different announcements this fall. We just heard about the Veterans Administration Grant, $750,000. You're one of 80 organizations nationwide that will receive this funding. Yes, this is very, very exciting news. We just received the news in September, and so we're moving ahead with getting the grant started. And Valerie, this will fund your suicide prevention programs and services, which along with assisting veterans who are suffering from PTSD, this is a big part of what you do, helping veterans with suicide prevention. Yes, yes, it is a huge piece of what we do, and so we're really excited because the grant will allow us to now actually hire some staff. We're planning on hiring a couple of case managers. We're gonna be hiring some uh, outreach crisis workers. Hopefully most of the employees will be veterans themselves. So this will help fund the retreats and workshops that you host? Yes, yes. In addition to the outreach and the case management work, it will also help us greatly with the retreats for PTSD that we hold. And Mark, obviously this is a pressing issue uh, facing veterans who, who come home. Uh, PTSD, yes, but also suicide. The, the rates are still incredibly high. Yes, upwards of 20 to 23 veterans a day commit suicide. You were able to secure this grant based on the success you've had for several years now, hosting healing retreats in the Adirondacks out in nature. These retreats, your campouts, are really a key focus of, of what your organization does? Uh, absolutely, and, and all the credit goes to Valerie. Um, she has um, crafted these retreats. She, she knows what works well, a, a, a balance of recreation and also the discussions uh, led by peers. Uh, other soldiers who have been to our retreats, uh, soldiers who can help other soldiers dealing with the same things they've dealt with and letting them know that there's, uh, they're, they're not alone, they're, they're, there's hope, there's, there's mechanisms out there to deal with it, and um, the, the retreat is there to spread that, that message. Will this grant allow you to expand your services? Yes, yes, the grant will allow us to hold a lot more retreats than we're able to hold now. We'll be able to hold them in a number of different venues around the region, um, in addition to the property that we will be building on um, in Malone. We just heard a few moments ago from Billy Jones, who's working to line up a quarter of a million dollars, $250,000 in state funding that will go toward the construction of the new retreat. You broke ground on that project a year ago this past summer in 2021, and you've been looking for several years now for a site uh, in the Adirondacks where you could build a lodge and, and invite the veterans and their families to come for your year-round retreats. And so that's moving forward. Yes. This is separate from the suicide prevention grant. The suicide prevention grant Correct. will be specifically for those services. Mm -hmm. You have a capital campaign that's been ongoing now for the retreat in Malone, and where does everything stand with that? So um, we've got three years left on a five-year mortgage, and then we will own the property free and clear. We have three to four phases of building that, that will occur. So the lodge will actually be the last building built. Uh, the first building will be what we're calling utility building, and that's going to have um, uh, three components. Number one is uh, water filtration because we had to dig a well 940 foot down uh, so that will bring in the water purify it for for use. Uh, another third of the building will be uh, restrooms male and female shower facility think of it almost like a campground setup. Then we'll move on to cabins we're gonna build four cabins um, three of which are are going to be just standard cabins uh, with uh, a heat and electricity three bedrooms each, two beds per bedroom, so we'll be able to house uh, six uh, veterans in each cabin. The, uh, the cabinet for disabled veterans will have two bedrooms in an internal bathroom, um, and it'll, it'll be able to sleep four. So we'll have upwards of the, the, the ability to house upwards of 20 people per retreat. Then lastly will be the lodge. The lodge is gonna be a 2,400 square foot building. It's gonna have a commercial kitchen, a large meeting room, which will double as a dining room. The great room will be for, um, for meetings, particularly when uh, we have uh, bad weather and they can't meet outside at the fire pit, which is another aspect of what we do, the mm -hmm. fire pit at night. But um, the great room will be for those kind of meetings in addition to lunch and dinner and kind of a multi-purpose room. So um, that will be in the final phase, that, uh, that lodge which overlooks one of our three ponds. And that's your dream. That that's is. been your dream for a number of years. Yes. yes. 
And what's the timetable for construction? Well, we, we look to utilize uh, Billy Jones um, $250,000 this summer. We want to go out to bid in, uh, in early January, February to build the utility building. And uh, if the funds allow us to uh, also um, uh, perhaps pour a couple of pads for the cabins. We don't expect to be able to put up any cabins immediately, but that'll be our next step. That first work will start in the spring, uh, this coming spring, you hope? Yes. It cost a, um, a bit of money to bring in the utilities. Uh, I mentioned the well. We also had to bring in power from the, from the highway, and we'll have to put in a couple of septic systems. So the utilities are, are, are a big uh, expense to this, which, which was vacant property. You have to get that infrastructure in place before you can, you can build the rest of right. it. And then down the road, uh, how many years do you think before the, the um, lodge may be up and built and You know, I, I, I'm trying to be conservative in the numbers, but I think it's going to be two or three years down the road. Uh, in between that will be the four cabins. Yeah. Each cabin is around sixty-five dollars to $75,000. The fundraising continues, the capital campaign it, it continues. Do, it does. As we saw uh, organizations help year round, mm -hmm. the Veterans Festival in Malone raised uh, just shy of $9,000. There are events like that, that that organizations are holding year round to try to help you meet your goal. And we've also reached out to local veterans organizations, American Legions, VFWs, AMVETS, uh, Disabled American Veterans. Uh, they've been very generous in, in, in giving what they can. And Valerie, you've been doing this for a number of years. You started in hotels, and then you leased a facility in, on Chiota, mm -hmm. and now you've been having uh, camping uh, at, at this site and other sites. Eventually, though, the hope is, is that this lodge, this retreat, will be your headquarters, will be where uh, many of your activities take place. Yes, you'll be going out into the wilderness. You'll have 100-plus acres for the veterans to enjoy, but this will really be the center of your operation. Yes, and in the meantime, we have been holding retreats at a variety of different venues across the Adirondacks, and we continue to hold retreats. We're planning on doing a number of them throughout the winter and the spring, so we're really excited about the upcoming season. Getting out in nature is a big part of this, and it still will be, but what will it mean to you folks to have that lodge, to have your own retreat to up and running within a few years? Well, it'll give us the opportunity to schedule uh, retreats whenever we want. Uh, we can hold as many as we want. We can hold them for as long as we want. You know, we typically do a retreat over a weekend. I've been getting requests for longer time periods. Um, we've been getting uh, veterans from all across the state uh, traveling to attend the retreats, as well as North Country veterans. So there, there's a lot of excitement about the retreats. It's wonderful to be in nature. It's wonderful to be in the wilderness. There's all, also a serious undertone to the retreats, the fireside, the discussions, the camaraderie, the support for each other with dealing with PTSD, with feelings of suicide, depression. So very, very important, um, and uh, the word is getting out. Many, many veterans are signing up for our retreats. And I think it's important to note that all of these services are free for the veterans and their family. There is no cost for the veteran to attend the retreats or any of our services. You have a lot of veterans who are on your board and who volunteer to help you host the retreats and raise funds for your dream of building this lodge. When we looked at Jack's story from a year ago, last summer, we, we, we saw a familiar face. So uh, one of them who's no longer with us, Frank Dorjak. Mm -hmm. And Frank uh, was a driving force for many veterans organizations and fundraisers in the Malone area and, and in Franklin County. And so uh, for him, I know this was a project that was near and dear to his heart. So. For you folks, that's a loss to, to lose Frank within the past year. Yes, Frank was a force of nature. Um, Frank was a guy that people had a hard time saying no to because Frank wouldn't accept no. So when he was looking to raise funds or he was looking to aid or assist a veteran, um, Frank made those things happen. And, 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 and we, uh, we do miss Frank, uh, but we will, um, we will build a retreat center um, worthy of his efforts, and as I told the family of Carlton Clark, uh, worthy of the efforts and the sacrifice their son made. Uh, it'll be named for Sergeant Carlton Clark, who gave his life in Iraq in 2005 as, as a young Vermonter. He was only 22 when he, when uh, he died? Thereabouts, in, yes. In service, uh, he, he died in action? He did. And that must mean a lot to his, to his family. Yes, we, we, we met his mother and father, lovely people. I think this gives them um, a, a, little, a little bit of um, 
uh, of comfort knowing that uh, their son's name will, will, will live on in service to other veterans. How do you folks feel about the next few years and where you're headed? You obviously have this huge project. You want to see the completion of the retreat and the lodge, but a, a few more years down the road, do you hope to be able to offer services or be able to do things that, that you, you can't right now? Well, I mean, we are very, very excited about the future. And a minute ago, you had mentioned volunteers. And we really do have to give credit to all the volunteers that have brought us to the place that we are today. Because if it wasn't for all the volunteers, and many of them were veterans and are veterans, um, I mean, we have volunteer drivers. We have people that are volunteered to uh, carry groceries, to cook food, to carry the firewood for, for the retreats. All of that combined has what may, has made us successful where we are today. So now we have an opportunity to grow and to serve many, many more veterans. Um, and one of the things that I hear from the veterans frequently is that they want to they want to go home and they want to tell other veterans about the incredible experience that they had so that those veterans can come back and partake in the Adirondack wilderness and also the healing pieces of what the retreats mean to them. And if folks want to learn more, they can go to homewardboundadirondacks.org and learn all about your, your programs, your events, your retreats. And we also service veterans um, in terms of uh, getting them connected with social services, um, transportation, mostly to medical appointments. We have a van. We've gone as far as Burlington and Albany. Syracuse. To the, Syracuse, to the VA centers. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we've gone so far as to help out with, uh, with, with um, uh, veterans that are in immediate need in crisis, and, uh, and we're able to get resources to help them out. Uh, uh, and and uh, folks who have been uh, referred from United Way and other organizations. So th those organizations know that we're out there and we can assist. Mark Moeller, Valerie Ainsworth, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Yes.